Well, thank you very much, Chairman. Um, <clears throat> I will try to be concise and short. So, uh, as, uh, as you are aware, in uh, 2014, uh, Georgia signed association agreement with European Union, and this was really one of the major accomplishments of uh, our country for uh, maybe, maybe since its independence. As far as uh, Georgia aspires to become member of the European Union, the association uh, with European Union is uh, probably <clears throat> the, uh, um, uh, almost institutionally, it's, uh, it's the last stage uh, towards this goal, uh, saying that there is no higher rate agreement or institutional arrangement between EU and the third country uh, higher uh, before the membership agreement, of course, than this one, than association agreement. But uh, Georgia signed uh, not just an association agreement with European Union, because the European Union has uh, lots of association agreements uh, all around the world, including, for example, association agreements uh, with Mediterranean, Euro-Mediterranean association agreements, for example, with uh, Southern Mediterranean countries, or association agreement with Chile or Mexico uh, or other <coughs> states. Uh, EU-Georgia association agreement is um, uh, equally like uh, EU-Moldova and EU-Ukraine association agreement is very special. It's almost the uh, same uh, type of agreement as uh, uh, were signed uh, with uh, Western, between EU and the Western Balkans, which became potential candidate countries. And it's almost same type of agreement that uh, uh, EU signed uh, uh, before um, uh, in 1990s so-called Europe agreements which which been signed with Eastern and uh, Central European states uh, granting them possibility to uh, for accession of the European Union so functionally we can say that the European Union Georgian association agreement is this is the highest uh, type of agreement that, that can exist between EU and the, and the third country what what is the meaning of this of my uh, consideration about the uh, higher level of agreement. Uh, first of all, political part of the agreement, it establishes such as close political relations between two sides that, for example, cooperation in security and defense uh, policy is uh, uh, not less than cooperation with any other third partner of the EU uh, and even uh, higher. Uh, I, uh, I uh, investigated or I made research on comparing political and security provisions of association agreement with those signed by EU with other third countries uh, and I found that they are much deeper than, for example, agreements uh, on uh, stabilization and association agreements signed with uh, Western Balkan countries, which are, some of them are candidate countries, some of them are already accession countries, like, uh, uh, like Montenegro, for example, um, <clears throat> and uh, some of them are potential candidates just. Uh, in uh, uh, cooperation in the f in uh, different sectoral cooperation fields, so the also the very deep uh, uh, cooperation uh, uh, possibilities um, in uh, officially in 22 sectors of um, economy and different other uh, of course spheres, but uh, in much more spheres, practically in all spheres, uh, Georgia and European Union agreed to cooperate, and European Union commits to help Georgia to develop institutionally in all spheres, like uh, uh, agricultural sphere, uh, this, uh, the uh, small and medium ent enterprises, the helping them in developing this uh, direction, energy, or would it be environment, or would it be health, uh, education, etc. Etc. So practically in everywhere. Uh, the third very important field is, of course, uh, uh, free movement of people. Uh, we uh, uh, we uh, got um, uh, a free free movement regime or 
uh, visa-free regime with you just recently in March 2017 uh, with you. It's for short-term visits, uh, three months uh, maximum visit during each six months for Georgian citizens uh, without right to work there, of course, or without right to uh, study, uh, etc., which need uh, separate, separate arrangement for this, separate visa uh, for this. Uh, but still, it is very big achievement because uh, uh, practically you um, has with almost 50 countries in the world. But if we consider in our region that in former, among former Soviet Union countries, you has no such regime save with Ukraine, Moldova, and Georgia. So again, we say Ukraine, Moldova, and Georgia, this Eastern Partnership, three Eastern Partnership countries shown more ambition, more interest for joining you or uh, uh, becoming closer to you than others, than other three countries. Um, and uh, uh, practically came quite close with this arrangement. Uh, Association agreement is not directly involved in this issue. So we had visa liberalization action plan, which was uh, a separate process. But association agreement provided uh, legal basis for this because it says uh, that the two sides, Georgia and the EU, will uh, uh, deepen uh, the possibilities for uh, free movement of citizens, uh, starting from facilitation, and the visa free is considered also by association agreement as an obligation for two sides to reach this level. So finally, the separate process, which was not exactly the, uh, the, the agreement uh, based, but uh, uh, influenced by agreement, uh, settled this issue in a way that we got short-term visa. But association agreement itself provides also different other freedoms for movement of people, uh, which is very important to see in uh, the chapter related to services uh, um, uh, uh, and uh, uh, establishment. Uh, this chapter uh, provides uh, special provisions for uh, free movement of Georgian uh, workers in certain situation and in certain cases. It's not full free movement, but when Georgia establishes, for example, company, there are certain, uh, uh, certain uh, possibilities for Georgian engineers, Georgian specialists work in these companies. Otherwise, there are also mentioned possibilities for Georgian professionals to, to provide services on EU territory, uh, online services, or uh, establish itself as, a, as a, um, a provider of services on EU territories. There are lots of possibilities. Uh, and uh, uh, also a commitment from side of EU to facilitate possibilities for Georgian citizens to move. So uh, the, the important possibility also for Georgians is which derives from uh, EU-Georgia relations, the level of relations and association agreement is the participation in EU agencies and programs. So EU has uh, almost 100 agencies and programs which uh, uh, work uh, in uh, uh, different fields. Practically any European Union internal cooperation fields uh, or common policies are reflected in the work of EU programs or agencies. So Georgia has got right to accede uh, such agencies, for example, if EU standardization agency or um, European agencies on uh, uh, environmental agency or food safety agency, etc. So uh, Georgia can accede and what, what it will serve for Georgia. Acceding such an agency, Georgia will start uh, better uh, uh, harmonization of its uh, uh, regulatory and legal environment with, with European standards in, this, in those fields. And also it will get better access for, uh, uh, to European market uh, uh, of its goods, services, etc. Um, then uh, the possibility of uh, involving in Georgian, as an inv in Georgian uh, infrastructure development, European Investment Bank, and EBRD. EBRD is open for, for any, uh, of course, uh, Eastern, Eastern European countries, but with special uh, uh, package, EBRD comes to Georgia. And 
EIB, which is much bigger than EBRD, uh, European Investment Bank. Uh, it is practically included in the association agreement as a strong agent, of a financial agent of EU uh, in helping to develop uh, infrastructural projects in Georgia, uh, especially those connecting the increasing connectivity of Georgia with European Union. Uh, and the last but, uh, but the, the, the strongest uh, direction and the most and the most important is uh, establishment of deep, deep and comprehensive free trade area between EU and Georgia. This is really, uh, really a very, very important um, thing for Georgia because saying simply, Georgia gets right to establish its stake in EU internal market. EU internal market, everybody knows, it's quite close thing. It's, uh, uh, it, it has risen very high uh, non-tariff barriers. One thing is that tariffs and the customs duties which, which are not as, as small. Now, I think uh, I also, invest, uh, I also um, made some research about EU tariffs and I, I saw that uh, the average tariff uh, duty for agricultural goods, including specific and uh, uh, <clears throat> the ad valorem duties, if, if you combine them and they recalculate uh, they, they, uh, they, amount, uh, um, they amount to 14% of, of the value of the products, imported products. And uh, this is important that Georgia got uh, zero tariff duties now, and Georgian agriculture can benefit from selling its products uh, to you. But what is most difficult, why the penetration to EU market is difficult for countries? This is because of the non-tariff barriers. This means that EU doesn't recognize the third country's certificates of origin. Certificates of um, origin is one thing, certificates of uh, conformity to standards. Uh, and equivalency of measure, measures, for example, like sanitary, phytosanitary fields, equivalency of measures, uh, and it demands uh, that the uh, uh, now, the explaining s simply, it's, it's uh, not easy, but it demands uh, from any product or services to be recognized by EU-based uh, uh, certification bodies accredited in EU. So, and even in certain directions, for example, in uh, animal uh, uh, origin products, uh, even recognition of the or laboratory, uh, uh, laboratory certificate and recognition by certification bodies of the product is not enough. You need registration, which is very uh, not simple procedure, and the EU experts, accredited experts, to come to the, to the country in Georgia, for example, and, uh, yeah, I'm very sorry, yeah, and um, establish, um, uh, um, well, one minute is, uh, was I talking a little so much, so much, okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, to establish, um, uh, to, to, get, to get the permission to trade to you. So, saying uh, in sanitary, sanitary field, in uh, um, standardization and technical regulations, association agreement establishes the process when Georgia's legislation, Georgia's institutional basis and regulatory basis will become in conformity and fully practically uh, harmonized with EU, EU uh, regulations and, di uh, and directives and then EU will recognize any uh, document issued in Georgia, any laboratory uh, um, uh, evaluation, uh, any certificate and Georgian goods and services can freely uh, go to uh, freely uh, circulate in, in European markets. This is very important that Georgia becomes part of EU internal market in this regard and it rises the confidence in Georgian, uh, in Georgian uh, 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 of course products. Uh, now, impact on uh, EU, Georgia, Azerbaijan trades. So I think impact uh, can be direct because uh, if today we have free trade with Azerbaijan, this free trade will remain because free trade between Georgia and the EU doesn't um, uh, impede to have free trade with other countries for us. But as regards to non-trade uh, uh, barriers, for example, uh, saying uh, technical barriers to trade, uh, uh, would it be also sanitary, phytosanitary standards or uh, technical barriers uh, to industrial products? Of course, uh, we... Uh, will introduce 
shortly the fully European standards in this. And this may be uh, damaging for, for our trade with Azerbaijan if Azerbaijan is not uh, rising its standards towards its, its export, uh, uh, exported goods standards to the level of European demands. Because Georgian, uh, uh, Georgian authorities would be uh, would be uh, uh, so-called, uh, they committed, uh, and it, it would be uh, Georgian internal, uh, internal legislation uh, providing certain demands uh, which is compatible and uh, it is fully harmonized with EU standards. So this means that we need to cooperate also with Azerbaijan very, very strongly in these fields and we should try somehow that Azerbaijan uh, also uh, takes into account the European demands in this, in this regards in order to have a free access to Georgian markets too. Uh, but also there is another topic which is very important, this is uh, the origin, uh, uh, the uh, issue of uh, rules of origin. Uh, association agreement provides possibility for third countries uh, to use opportunity to cooperate with associated countries like Georgia uh, and uh, to establish, for example, joint ventures and Azerbaijan could export its goods through Georgia or in cooperation with Georgian companies uh, to uh, uh, EU markets also free of, uh, free of uh, duties. Uh, I, it doesn't mean that Azerbaijani goods can go to Georgia, register there, and go to the EU markets free of duties. It is not possible. But Azerbaijani components of Azerbaijani goods can be included in Georgian goods uh, freely traded to, uh, to European Union. And this provides additional opportunities for cooperation between Azerbaijan and Georgia. Uh, and I count very much that there is need for investigation and uh, the organization like uh, we saw today, the economic the, um, research centers, etc. So I think they should work as much as possible in order to, to explore these possibilities and opportunities. This one direction. Second thing is, of course, Azerbaijani investments can rise in Georgia because the destination of the market in European Union uh, this, uh, 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 is, uh, becomes, becomes um, uh, much easier for Georgian goods and services to to get in European markets. So uh, the producers and the investors from Azerbaijan are welcome and they, be, they will be, I think, more interested in the future to invest in Georgia, to produce there, especially uh, the goods destined for European markets. And I think this is important. We will see in the near future uh, increasing, even we have already increased uh, investments from Azerbaijan, we will see increasing investments from Azerbaijan. Mm, uh, I think uh, there are lots of other opportunities. Uh, I, finally, I know that Azerbaijan is negotiating now with the EU, already started the new agreement. I hope very much that these will, agreements will involve and include also um, the provisions on approximating Azerbaijani standards with EU standards. Then when this agreement will be signed and Azerbaijan will start approximating its uh, regulatory basis uh, with the European standards, as it already started according to partnership and cooperation agreements signed in 1999, but will increase this process, will force, uh, uh, enforce this process, the association agreement. I, I think that uh, the possibilities for cooperation between Azerbaijan and Georgia will rise and we will, uh, we will get more possibilities. So thank you very much. I was uh, told that I um, overused my time. Uh, just for, for, the, for the end, um, I, I will, of course, uh, advise to all research centers from Azerbaijan and Georgia cooperate more because this is a very important thing. There was no uh, serious investigation or a serious um, research uh, done uh, on this topic, how Georgia's European integration can affect Georgia-Azerbaijani relations and how to use these opportunities for both and increase cooperation, not uh, 
increase divide between countries and create the barriers between countries, but how to use and to integrate more uh, using these uh, uh, opportunities related to Georgia's uh, integration, uh, gradual integration with the European Union. So I invite all the research organizations to join efforts, to join efforts with Georgian uh, organizations. Our organization is open and ready to cooperate on these issues with Azerbaijani organizations. And I, I'm sure that we will find ways how to increase our trade, our industrial relations, uh, mutual investments, and so on. Thank you very much.